This channel is generously supported by TrueFire. Over 2 million guitar players worldwide learn, practice, and play with TrueFire. Hi there, Perfecto Nicaster here and welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. Okay, in this uh, bubble wrapped little package right here is my dream guitar. I'm gonna show it off to you guys. Let's go. Okay, so I'm not gonna keep you guys in much suspense. I will tell the stories uh, after I open this because I and myself am excited. Okay, here we go. Riulim Quiken to take care of the packaging. Okay, one layer down. Okay, whoever packed this, packed it really, really well. Okay, second layer down. Okay. So, you may have already seen this. The <laughs> branding on the side of the case gives it away. So this is an Ibanez something. Okay. This is a new to me guitar, but it is not a new guitar. It's a new old guitar. New to me old guitar. What's the, what's the proper term? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so I reserve the right for the first look. There's more bubble wrap. And one of the strings is broken. Um, I knew that <laughs> when I bought this guitar. Cause, um, <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me just take this in for, for a second because this is quite a moment for me. Enough suspense. I'm gonna take it out of the case. And a slow reveal. Whoa. Ah, <laughs> oh, look at that. It is so beautiful. Wow. Okay, let me tell you a story. When I was around 15 years old, I had the opportunity to go to Japan to accompany my mother on a business trip. And um, I remember specifically telling her that I'm gonna join you if I can buy a guitar <laughs> in Japan. So, uh, long story short, we found ourselves in Japan, we went to a music store, it was Ishibashi music, if I recall correctly, and rows and rows of guitars. That was my first time seeing that many guitars in one place, and, and those were the guitar brands that I only see in guitar magazines, um, <laughs> you know, back in the Philippines. And uh, this was around 1989. And I went straight to the Ibanez rack and grabbed 
one of these, just as I am holding it right now by the monkey grip and saying, this is the one I want. And of course, my mom asked me, well, how much is it? I look at the price tag and, okay, this is not what I want. <laughs> because it was just too much. Even back then it was expensive. So I went for the for the uh, next you know model down, which is the RG550 Desert Sun Yellow. And I would shed it on that guitar. Most of my skills were developed on that guitar in the succeeding years. And the reason why I remember this quite clearly uh, back in 1989 because on the flight back from Japan, we were actually stranded uh, in the airport for a day or two, maybe. I just remember sleeping at the airport because a coup broke out in Manila and um, all the flights were suspended. So we had to spend time in the airport, which I did practicing on, on my new Ibanez RG, new at the time RG550 uh, Desert Sun Yellow. Anyway, so throughout my career, I've always seen this guitar. Pictures of this guitar and um, yeah, it was, this is my dream guitar. Yeah, right here. And I can't believe I'm holding one right now. Cause, yeah, look at that. Now, I wasn't actively seeking to purchase a floral gem. However, this came up for sale from a private player and it was a, a pretty good price. It's not cheap, but it was a pretty good price for what this is. And this is a 1990 uh, gem floral pattern, the original floral pattern gem. Oh God. And it looks to be in really, really good shape. Now, the first thing you want to check on this era of Ibanez is the neck pocket, because usually there are stress cracks here and here. And this particular gem is in very good shape. There are no stress cracks at the uh, neck pocket or even finish cracks. And there's no issues at the back of the headstock as well. I mean, I need to change the strings and set it up. Um, huh. Oh, I saw the control cavity. In the case, I just have to put that back in. I hope the screws are there. Um, and like with most guitars, the back plate for the tremolo cavity is off. That way it can be easily um, adjusted. However, mm, it might be in the case, maybe, hold on. Okay, it's not in the case, but that is not a big deal because you know I'm, I'm just gonna leave it off anyway. And the owner also kindly uh, included a DiMaggio clip lock strap, which is the strap of choice for this guitar. Okay, my camera is wondering. Okay, there you go. Okay. I'm sorry if I'm not talking a lot. I'm just, I'm just taking this in because this is quite a moment for me. Yeah. Anyway, um, watch out for the next video. Actually, maybe, no, I'll, I'll, I'll put it, I'll include it in this video. So the next shots will be of me setting this guitar up and getting it playable uh, to my liking, and then you will hear it. Truefire is the world's most comprehensive guitar learning platform with interactive learning tools and a massive library of over 50,000 videos taught by the best in their fields. From top educators to session players to our very own guitar heroes like Steve Vai, Ingve Malmsteen, Eric Johnson, and Tommy Emmanuel. As soon as this floral gem is all set up, I'm going to go to Truefire and dive right back into Alien Guitar Secrets, Steve Vai's interactive video masterclass.
My affiliate link in the video description will take you to Truefire's sales and promo page for the best deals currently on offer, including the All Access Pass, which gives you streaming access to all courses and song lessons on the Truefire website. Thank you, Truefire, for being such a great friend and supporter of my work on this channel. Now, let's get back to the video. Okay, uh, change of plans. I just tried to reinsert this first string back into the block, uh, as you could do on typical Floyd Rose. And yeah, everything is like really tight and uh, sticky. So I don't want to force anything and and possibly break it. So the new plan is to take this to a professional, uh, definitely somebody who knows what they're doing and have it professionally set up and uh, you know restored. That way I don't end up breaking my precious little dream guitar right here. Yeah, so um, this will take a while. But through the magic of video editing, the next clip will be this guitar singing nice and loud and proud. Yeah. Okay, so I can't leave well enough alone. Uh, I know I said that I was going to have this guitar professionally set up. However, it's a, a couple of weeks before uh, the, the tech is available and I, I, I can't wait that long. I want to I wanna play my, my dream guitar. So, <laughs> um, in between the previous clip and this clip, I did a little bit of tinkering. And uh, I wasn't able to film it because I wanted my entire focus on the guitar so as I don't accidentally break it or destroy it or anything. However, let me show you what I did. Okay, so there is my floral gem. <laughs> it feels good to say that, my floral gem. Um, all, as you can see, all the strings are now installed. This first string saddle and string lock uh, was seized up. Okay, so the, the block wasn't moving in place. So what I did was I took a little bit of silicone lubricant like this and soaked uh, a cotton bud with it and just gently worked it into that string lock to loosen it up. Um, it finally did loosen up after uh, some gentle taps with a flathead screwdriver and a rubber mallet. And now I was able to feed the old broken string back into the saddle and lock it in place. Okay, so as you can see, it is now in tune. And yes, and it is actually playable. <laughs> playable, and I've already enjoyed a little bit of it through my little Moore Hornet 05i. Okay, now this is what worried me um, when I first tried to reinstall that string. So this is a hex hider and the bolt was really, really tight to the point that it's, as you can see, it stripped the, it stripped the Allen part of this hex hider. Okay, so that made me, you know, stop and take a step back and make sure that um, I didn't I didn't mess up any of the uh, this guitar's parts. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so this is, uh, uh, well, anyway, I'm just glad that I broke this hex hider instead of, instead of that. But uh, with the help of my Music Nomad toolkit, these are made out of more hardened materials and yeah, and I have more leverage with the with the handle here and the extension rod. So I was able to uh, gently, you know, loosen this up uh, without having to really force things through. So thank you, Music Nomad, for making this awesome little tool set. Okay, so I'm gonna play it. Okay, so I am plugged into my Moore Hornet 05i and that is in turn plugged by OTG into this DJA Action 4. Okay, so that will record all the guitar tones. Okay, <laughs> and you might be wondering why I am on the floor because, I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not really sure why, but 
uh, when I was younger, this is how I set up my guitars. I'd be on the floor and I would just be tinkering and all that. And, to, you know, it just, it just happened that way. <laughs> so these are decades old strings, really. I, I, I wipe them down with a little bit of the, the silicone lube as well, just so that I don't you know, get tetanus. <laughs> Um, this guitar was stored for decades with the broken string inside the case in somewhere um, before before it was sold to me, and it's it's amazing how it it still works. The setup the setup is nice. The strings are old. I mean, if if I go to a clean sound, you will hear how dead the strings are. See, <laughs> no. Uh, no hint of uh, brightness ping whatsoever. If I maybe if I do, this is an old bass player's trick. Help it a little bit, but still, yeah, new strings are in order. But this proves that everything works as, you know, as they should. Um, the strings feel like nines, so I will probably keep this guitar strung up with nines instead of my custom 10 to 50 set, um, just to make it, you know, uh, faithful to the era or, or what its intended purpose is. Let's do a little bit of gain. And this is where the fun is. <laughs> old strings it's struggling to stay in tune now uh, anyway uh, but I am very happy that that everything worked and it sounds pretty good the pickups are not as high output as I expected them to be I have to look up the exact set but I believe this is one of them is a, a path pro and uh, I'm not sure what the bridge pickup is. A super distortion, maybe? I don't know. Hey, Vinuts who are, who are more well-versed with the specs, please put them in the comments. This brings me to the next part. You guys can have a hand in influencing the next 
part of this story. So now that I know that I can uh, safely tinker with this guitar, do you guys want to see me set this guitar up for my playing right here and I will film the entire process. I will show you some cool stuff from Music Nomad and, and all that stuff. And I'll probably produce a track of me playing this guitar. Or do you guys want me to keep my appointment at a performance guitar in Hollywood and have uh, Mr. Sugai work his magic on this guitar? For those not in the know, performance guitar was instrumental in developing the gem for Steve. So all the prototypes um, were either built there or, or tweaked there uh, to Steve's exact specification. So they know exactly how to treat uh, this wonderful guitar and set it up to be really, really playable. So let me know which uh, direction should I take so that I can take you guys along with me, okay? So do you want me to set this guitar up myself or do you want me to take this guitar, have it set up at Performance Guitar in Hollywood, one of the iconic guitar spots here in Los Angeles. Now, before I end this video, um, I wanna talk a little bit about you know, dreams, <laughs> dreams and achieving them and having them come true. So looking back on my career, I am now a firm believer of the law of attraction. Now, the thing about dreams is that um, it's not going to be given to you. Dreams are not given. They are achieved. Okay. Um, I had a dream of playing guitar for the rest of my life. And with that goal set in my mind, um, all my actions and all my decisions in life were influenced in achieving that dream or working towards that dream. And I can honestly say that um, it has been a very, very uh, wild journey, uh, fulfilling, frustrating at times. Um, there were times where I almost gave up. Um, but something always reeled me back in and kept me hanging on and pushing through and just, you know, just, just going for it. So basically what I'm trying to say is don't be afraid to dream big, you know, shoot for the stars, shoot for the moon, shoot for the entire next galaxy, you know, and work your way towards it, you know, let that be your your purpose in life and do whatever you can to work your way towards that dream as passionately as you can. However, be flexible and be open to opportunities because, you know, dreams change, goals change. And yeah, we have to be ready to pivot whenever needed. Anyway, I don't know if <laughs> all of that made sense. Uh, I hope it did. But uh, yeah, I wish you all the best in your journey. And I hope, you know, whatever I do or what I've done is in some way inspirational or helpful to all you guys. And yeah, I wish you all the best. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for joining me in enjoying this wonderful guitar, which will remain in my collection until I pass it on to the next generation. Um, do all the good YouTube things, like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to comment down below and let me know which video you want me to make next involving this floral gem right here. Okay, that's it. You know the drill, practice makes perfecto, progress, uh, better. <laughs> However you wanna, however you wanna uh, think of that slogan, as long as it helps you in your journey. Cheers.